Good evening. Thanks for joining us for our online midweek service here at Hope Church Midway. We hope you're doing well. I'm just so grateful we can worship God together like this. And in this season, in this hour, it's so important to be drawing close to him and to be praying and pressing into him and his word. So let's worship God tonight. Let's just pray really quick before we go in. God, we thank you so much for who you are. We want to come before you with grateful hearts, Lord. I thank you that you are gracious and compassionate. You are slow to anger. Lord, I thank you that we don't even know the depths of your love, but we, but we get to come before you and we get to feel your love and experience your love, God. I ask that you would keep showing it to us, that we would have an understanding of it, Lord, and that we would experience your peace that passes understanding. It surpasses understanding, Lord. We thank you for that. So we worship you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh jesus jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. I 
but he brought me in his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed I'm a child of God yes I Slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me Chosen, chosen, not for. 
Thank you that your love tonight is is ever present. It's here pursuing hearts. It's here healing us tonight. God, I ask that you would make your love known to us in a new way. That you would help us to receive it. Because it's always available, Lord. Would you soften our hearts before you, God? Would you help us not be afraid to lay things down before you? Because we know that you want all of us, Lord, every part of us. We want to walk in surrender with you. Surrender before you, Lord. Mm, there's nothing like your love. Before I spoke a word. You are singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind. Before I spoke a word, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. Mm -hmm. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, and I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Mm -hmm. 
felt no worse. You paid it all for me. Yeah. You have been so, so kind to me. We are so grateful for that amazing love that we can't possibly grasp. God, we could try to think about it, reading your word, kind of praying and just trying to meditate on what that love means to us. God, we'll never fully know until we're face to face with you. But God, we are so grateful that not only do you have that love for us, but God, you are love itself. Thank you for your love and that care that's with us every single day. That you'll do whatever it takes, God, to have that relationship because you want to see us, God, succeed. You want to see us grow. You're encouraging us. You're cheering us on. And we are so grateful. 
God, for that love that continues to impact our lives every single day. May we not just know that love personally, but God, may we also share that love with others who need to hear your story. We thank you so much in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you so much to our worship team. And uh, also to our visiting guests here, Justin, who is uh, one of our wonderful missionaries who we support. And it's always great to have him here. And great, obviously, to have Pastor Hannah help to lead as well. Well, we are excited um, that next week we are not going to be here. And we're not just excited we're not going to be here. But we're excited about what we're actually doing next week, which is a vacation Bible school. And we're going to have that online. And uh, so, parents, you can register for that online. And uh, we want to encourage you to do that. Uh, you know, I love VBS when I was growing up. Um, you get to play games. You hear exciting stories about God. You get to make some great memories. Um, these are things that I got to do, and I was really excited about it. And I want to encourage parents, please, please, please sign up because um, you want your kids to be involved with these things as well. And the one thing that we always knew we'd hear about in a vacation Bible school was Jesus' love. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, this love of Jesus, this relentless love of God. And this is what we're going to be focusing on today. So whether you're a kid or you're an adult, if you get this idea that God loves you, if you get that, then you get God himself. Why? Because in 1 John 4, 8, it says that God is love. That's who he is. It's his essence. It's, it, there's nothing more that he can do than be who he is, and he is love. So it's great for us to know that God loves everyone. And that's easy for us to say when we look at a verse like this or think of other verses that talk about God's love. But what's harder for us to really grasp is does God love me personally? Does he love me knowing my, my failures, my insecurities, my sin? I mean, he knows all these things about me. I think we struggle with just wondering, do I matter to God? Does he really care about what's going on? And again, we can get very theological about this, but you have to also get personal. You can't just say, well, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that's great because that's the whole world, but you have to make it personal that he loved me so much. And if we don't understand that, it's gonna have, we're going to have a hard time really connecting with God. We're always going to kind of feel like we're being used by God and not loved by God. And this is obviously a very big difference. You know, it's easy for us to feel that way, that God just wants to use us. It's kind of like having a friend who only calls you when they need something big, like they haven't talked to you for a year and then suddenly they need to move and now you're their best friend because they need your help. And that's not what this is like. And a lot of people can think of it that way. In fact, I think that that's what the enemy wants us to think about, that this is how God wants us to see him. And I think that we can feel that way about God at times. And in Mark 10, this is where we're going to be at today, this might have been what the disciples might have had a thought about, that Jesus is just about to send them out, and he says this, these verses here in 17 through 19. It says, but beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other believers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. And as we always say, it's important for us to put ourselves in the different people's shoes when we're reading this. And so you have to put yourself in the disciples' shoes. God is telling, Jesus is telling them, I'm just about to send you out so everybody can hear about the love that I have and, and the salvation opportunity. They can come now together with God and have a difference in their life. I'm about to send you out, and a whole bunch of bad things are going to happen to you. But it's okay, because in the end, it's all worth it. You, it would be very easy as a disciple to get kind of cynical and say, okay, you want me to go out here, and all these bad things are going to happen, but what matters is that it's for the greater good. That doesn't really seem like you're personally caring for me. It seems like you're caring more for the mission of what I can do and not necessarily about me. I think that would be very easy for them to think about because that's not what we sign up for. None of us sign up to try to feel like we want to be used. No, 
You want to sign up saying, I want to know God's grace. I want to know God's love. I want to know God's forgiveness. I want to know God's opportunities. I want to know his love personally. This is, this is something else. This is something different. I might say, well, I thought we were going to be talking about the relentless love of God. That's what the whole title sign said. So what are we actually doing here? How is this showing love? Because this really is just looking at being used by God. But again, I think that's one of the greatest lies that the enemy can put into our heads. That Jesus doesn't love us, but that he's using us. Which again is an absolute lie. But I think that there's very easy for that to go into our minds. I can't tell you how many times I've heard different people when they ask uh, for volunteers for the church, for instance. They're like, oh, you really care about what I can do for you. And we say, no, no, we're caring about what we can do together. Because God has such a great opportunity for you and for us. And we can reach out to the community. We can reach out to the world. And they're like, "Uh uh-huh, sure. And it's very easy for us to get so cynical. And I think it would have been very easy for the disciples to do this if Jesus didn't say this next verse. Verse 24 says, Students are not greater than their teacher, and slaves are not greater than their master. Students are to be like their teacher, and slaves are to be like their master. See, Jesus wasn't telling them to do anything that he wasn't about to do himself. I mean, what is Jesus saying? He's saying, I am going to do anything to save everyone. I will do anything. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He came to this earth. He didn't have to. He showed that. He went around and lived as one of us with all the different trappings that goes with it. He found, faced all the temptations that we face, but he didn't sin. But he still faced these things. He obviously went to the cross and died with the weight of our sins on there. He does all these things. He has all this weight upon him. It seems pretty crazy. It seems pretty crazy to see that he would take all this upon himself. You know, I think a way for us to understand about this, there's a story I've shared. It's one of my favorites, and I haven't shared it for a while, and I'd love to share it again. And it's talking about this girl who gets picked up um, from Children's Church. And her mom has her in the back seat of the car, and the girl is really quiet, which she's normally uh, pretty loud and pretty boisterous. And the mom says, well, what's, what's going on? The girl's just really thinking intently. And the mom said, well, what did you, what did you learn in church? What, what's going on? And she said, well, the teacher said that God lives in us. And the mom said, that's absolutely right. Jesus lives in us. The moment you say, I want you in my heart, God comes and he lives inside of you. And it's excellent and it's great. And you can feel his love. And you can have him at all times. And, and the girl was still there quiet and, and pondering. She says, well, he lives in us. But isn't he bigger than us? And the mom pauses and says, oh, my goodness, I I have to try to explain how God could be omnipresent and omnipowerful. And I, I got to explain all these big theological things to my little girl of how God is so great, but yet he is so personal. And it's going to be a very difficult to try to explain all these great things to her. And the mom say, yes, yes, God is, God is bigger than us. And the girl said, well, if God lives in us, but he's bigger than us, that doesn't make sense. And the mom said, yeah, I'll try to explain it. And the girl interrupted her and she said, well, Well, if God lives in us and he's bigger than us, won't he show through? I think that's such an important thing for us to see here. And this is exactly what Jesus was telling them. He's saying, look, if you're going to be like me, then I have to show through you. You can't just play it safe all the time. I'm going to have to have you do some things that are going to seem complicated. I want you to be aware of what's going to happen. I want you to be aware of what's at stake. But know that you're not alone. Know that I've already shown you this area. I've already shown you which way to go. Think of the lyrics for some of the songs that we sang today about Jesus fighting for us, about Jesus dying for us personally. The great line, lead me in your love to those around me. What love are we talking about? We're saying, God, let your love show through. And Jesus did everything he could to reach out to people. I mean, you might say, is Jesus asking us me to die for someone else? Not necessarily. But he is the example. It's important for us to know. He's the example of love that we must share with those around us. And it's not going to be easy. And Jesus showed this. I mean, he was mocked. He was feared. He was hated. But he still showed his love. That love had to show through because he is love. And if Jesus lives inside us, his love must show through in every single part. I mean, Jesus is telling his disciples Share my love, which is free, but it is going to cost you, so be aware. It may cost you your friends. 
may cause some relationships within your family. It may cause your coworkers to be a little nervous at times. It may cost you, but God wants us to be aware. Why? Because the cost is worth it. It's worth it. Verse 28, Jesus says, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. If you're only God who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. He's showing and saying, hey, don't worry about just what's going to happen in this life. Think about eternity. So what happens in this life compared to eternity is nothing. This present time, our years that we live on this earth, in this little 80 to 85, 90, whatever years that we have on this earth compared to eternity, it's like a drop of water in the ocean of time. It looks like nothing. But yet we're so worried about this little drop at all times. And Jesus is saying, no, don't worry about this. Focus on the whole ocean. And then you'll start focusing on people instead of your own little drop. And so he's wanting them to see something different. And we need to share because we care. We share because we care. Because no matter what the, it costs us personally, other people will pay if we don't share. Other people will be actually going to hell, and we have to think about that. And so when God's telling us to be ready and to be aware, it's going to get uncomfortable. It's going to be a little hard. He's saying you need to understand what's at stake. You need to understand what's going on and why I'm asking you to do this. And yes, it's uncomfortable for a little bit, but it's going to be a lot more uncomfortable for those we don't share with in eternity. And isn't it worth a little bit of uncomfort for them to have an eternity with God? But you might say, well, doesn't that still seem like we're just a number and that God's not caring for us personally. You know, I mean, uh, we need to reach out to all these different people, so we need to reach out to them. They're going to reach out to people, and those reach out to people. But what about the personal love? What about the personal care? And I think the disciples had to have wondered this when Jesus was sharing this and saying, yes, I want you to go out to everyone, and I want you to follow my example. And you know, it's so important that we're doing this because your life versus eternity, it's not nothing even close to that. But he still need to let them know the truth and not to let the enemy have that lie that you aren't personally cared about by God. And so he shares these verses here. Verse 29. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin. But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. So Jesus is bringing up sparrows in this example. And again, we have to put ourselves in the mindset of the disciples that were there. I mean, a sparrow seemed so worthless because there were so many of them around. And they only had a lifespan of a little less than a year. So God's caring about some ordinary, worthless, you know, thing that doesn't live that long. That's important for us to know. It's important for us to know because we can feel that we don't understand God's love when, and we think about eternity. We can feel that way. We can feel worthless. We can feel like there's so many other different people. Why does God care about me personally? And my life isn't that long and doesn't seem that big compared to all of eternity. Yet he's saying, I pay so much personal attention. He shows his relentless love by saying, not one can fall to the ground without the Father knowing. And this would be like Jesus nowadays going downtown and saying, all these pigeons, yeah, I care about them personally. I care about them personally. And that would just blow our minds and say, well, they're just rats with wings. Why are, you, why are you caring about these things? But he's saying, no, no, everything is that important to God. It is that focused, that focused-minded on something that seems so trivial to the rest of us. And then, of course, he brings up the hairs on our head. I mean, do you know how much hairs we lose every single day? And I'm not talking about people who are bald, and I'm just talking about the average human being loses between 50 and 100 hairs a day. A day. I mean, think about that. That's at different times throughout the day. It's not all in one shot. This is, you know, a wind blows a certain way. You know, you're brushing your hair, all these other things. And God is focusing there, paying attention to every detail of our life. That is so awesome to see that kind of a love. It's not that God is meticulous or he's got like some major OCD or something. No, no, this is that relentless love of God. He is always looking, always there, paying attention to us. But for so many people, they don't think that's necessarily a, a good thing. 
Do I want him paying attention to me if I'm, if I'm going to be messing up? Or if I'm doing something wrong, do I really want him looking at me? Is, is he just waiting to see when I mess up? But that's not the love that God has. No, he's there actually encouraging us. We read about this in Psalm 10, verse 17. It says, you, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them, and you listen to their cry. That word there in, in Hebrew for afflicted can take many different means. Afflicted, humble, going through trials. People that are actually living this life that Jesus was saying, when you're going out there, things are going to be hard. You need to be aware of this. You need to be aware of what's going on. You need to be alert about what's happening around you. But I'm also wanting you to be attentive and being in action in here, being very active. He says, when you're doing this, it might be hard, but I'm here to encourage you. And I love that he says this. I'm here to encourage you as you're going through this. I mean, he's encouraging us, saying, you can do this. And why can we do this? Because it's not just you can do this. It's we can do this. When he's encouraging us, it's because he is empowering us with the Holy Spirit living in our life. It's not us just on our own. It's not like Jesus is saying, okay, well, go out there, and I hope for the best for you. Be aware of what's going to go on. No, God goes out there with us. We're never alone. He has that kind of love with us that he's saying, I'm there with you every single step of the way. It's not just you. It's me inside you moving through you. Allow me to show through. Allow me to empower you. Allow me to encourage you. When you really look at it, the enemy wants us to make us think that God is using us, but really we're using God. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm saying the greatest positive way that we're able to tap into the power that God has available to us. We're able to get into the wisdom as he told the disciples. You could be standing in front of these great men and women and be so amazed and saying, I don't know what I can say to these royalty, to these people in power. And he says, no, I will speak for you. I will work for you. I will empower you. I will move through you. We use God. And that is so incredible to see that he doesn't care about. He's not insulted by it. He says, no, I want us to do this together. I rose again so that we could have this opportunity. We can have this opportunity to see this life together, to change this world, but that I could also live it with you. He didn't just raise up and say, okay, now reach out to everyone. No, he went personally into our lives. That's the kind of love that we have from God. I love that that verse also talks about God listening. He knows what we're going through, and he's there ready to help. You might just say, well, my life might just seem like a little drop of water of time and, you know, compared to the ocean of time. It might just seem like something small, but God cares about every single part of what might seem like a drop to us it means everything to him, everything to Jesus. And I love that we can see this. Verse 31 says, so don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Don't be afraid. I am here with you. I am caring for you. And if I care about something that seems worthless to you, it's not worthless to me. I am paying attention to every single one of these birds that don't even live a year. It seems so common. It seems so regular. I'm caring about hairs that you don't even think about that are flying off every single moment. I am focusing in full attention. Why? Because I love you and I care for you and I care about every detail of your life. I'm here inside you. I clear a path before you. I have your back. I'm here every single moment. Jesus is showing his true love. This isn't something, just something that Jesus said. It's something that he showed on the cross. He showed that love on the cross. I love that Jesus isn't words. He's not just about words. He's about action. He's asking a disciple, he's asking you and me to be about action. He's saying, I want you to be attentive. I want you to be aware about what's going on. I want you to be alert for those that I have around you and the calling that I have for your life. But I also want you to be active. And he showed that by being active himself. He didn't just talk about love. He showed it. And students must be like their teacher. He showed that love in such a great way. His relentless love for us. And it's hard for us to really grasp what that love looks like. And there's an illustration I always used to love that uh, Robbie Zacharias gave a lot. And uh, it's one of my, my favorite illustrations. It's about this five-year-old who had had an operation and needed a blood transfusion or she was going to pass away. They're looking to try to find a match to, uh, for her blood type. They're searching around. They found out that her brother, who was 13 years old, had an exact match for her. So the doctor came over to this brother and said, well, 
are you willing to, to give her some of your blood? And the brother paused and, and he thought well about it. He looked right at the doctor and said, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm willing to give her my blood. And so they got him prepped and they got him down there on the table and the, the boy was looking just scared as anything. And the doctor said, hey, don't worry about it. You know, we've done this procedure tons of times. And he hooked her up. And as he was taking the blood from the boy, the boy started just to get paler and paler in front of him. And he said, are, are you feeling okay? Are you feeling sick? And the boy looked up with tears in his eyes and he said, I just don't know when I'm going to die. And, and the doctor was very perplexed, obviously. And he said, what, what do you mean, die? Why, why would you die? Do you think that by giving your sister your blood, you're going to die? And he nodded his head, yes, tears still coming down out of his eyes. And he looked at him again and he said, so you were going to give your life for your sister? And again, he nodded. Because after that, this doctor published his story so everybody could see the man who he said was his hero. This little boy who didn't realize and just thought, well, I'll do whatever it takes to allow my sister to live. And it's such a great example of the kind of love that God has. That it was that personal. He says, I'm willing to give my life. And he gave his life for you. Knowing all of our faults, knowing all of our flaws, knowing our insecurities, how we're feeling about ourselves. He says, no, I love you so much, and I believe in you so much, and I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to help you, and I'll do whatever it takes, include giving my entire self so you can do something great with your life. He gave our, his life for ours, and then he rose again so he could be a part of our life. It's an amazing thing. So whenever the enemy wants to make you wonder, do I matter to God, you can easily say, absolutely yes. We matter more than Jesus' life to God. That's how much you matter. So I want to encourage you today. This isn't just something that we can sit back and feel really good about ourselves and say, man, this is such a great thing to see about God's love. But we're going to pray together right now. Again, Tuesdays are our prayer means. We're going to pray that God would help us to be ready as he readied the disciples. So first of all, to be aware as Jesus asked us to be. To know that there will be hard times that will be coming, but knowing that we're not alone. It's we are doing the work together, not I am doing the work. And that he will empower you. He will help you out. But we need to be aware. We need to be aware of the cost. We're saying, God, help to save my family. He's going to say, okay, I'm going to use you. And it might be hard for a while. God, help my coworkers. Okay, I'm going to use you. But be aware. It might be hard for a little bit. We have to be aware of the cost. But it's worth it. Why? Because we need to be alert to the needs that are around us. The lost ones that are around us. It's so worth a little bit of uncomfort for us. For an eternity in heaven with Jesus. It's so worth it. And we have to be aware of that. And knowing that. The last thing is for us to be active. It's not just count the cost, not just saying, well, I see the need that's around me, but God, make me a part of the solution to this problem. Help to use me. And allow me to really pray that you would use me in tangible ways. And when I see a way, I'll actually take advantage of the situation. I won't clam up. I won't say, well, maybe this is for somebody else, or maybe it's somebody who knows the Bible a little bit better, or for somebody who's a little bit more mature than I am. No, no, no. Jesus will work through you. That's the point. He empowers you. He helps you. He encourages you. And he helps you. We just have to ask. So let us pray today on these three things. We thank you, Jesus, for being the absolute example of love to us. And we are grateful that in that love, you are still purely honest with us. Asking us to be aware. Knowing that there will be a cost to sharing your love. Your love is free, but it definitely can cost us. So God, I pray right now, allow us to know what that cost is, but to be ready for it. Allow us to be prayed up every single day. God, maybe we would be into your words so we're ready, God, to give ammunition so the Holy Spirit can use us. God, I pray that you would help us to know that, God, it's not just us saying, well, I'm just going to say one quick prayer now and just move on. But, God, you're wanting us to be aware of the cost so we're also prepared for the cost every single day. So I pray you would allow us to do that. God, I pray for the one who, is, who said, I, I, I know that I need to be alert 
to those around me. And right now, as, as I was preaching, you put somebody on their heart. That coworker you put on their heart, that family member you put on their heart, that friend, that neighbor, you put them on their heart right now. I pray that we would continue to be alert and looking for opportunities to share natural ones, organic ones, because God, you go before us, you prepare hearts. We just need to be aware and looking and seeing the opportunities that you present for us. So I pray we would be alert. And lastly, God, I pray that we would be active. When you show us those needs that are in front of us, that we'll be ready and that we will be willing. I pray that we will continue to know that you will encourage us, you will speak through us, you will empower us. I pray that we will say yes when the opportunity comes. We will say what you ask us to say. We will do acts of love that you ask us to do. God, we will be your hands and your feet extended. We thank you so much that you see us just as you saw the disciples and you sent them out and we hear about the great works that happened when they were sent out and they did what you asked them to do and they were amazed by what they were able to do because of the power you gave them, because of you empowering them, because you gave them your words, because the Holy Spirit was in them working through them. We are so grateful to hear about what happened with them and we are encouraged to know that the same Jesus who sent them out is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you're sending us out. And the Holy Spirit, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father, you have the same plans yesterday, today, and forever for every single person. We thank you for the worth that you see in us. That's not just theological, but that it is personal. We thank you for that love. May we always be encouraged in it. In Jesus Christ's name. Well, thank you so much for again meeting with us. And again, just to reiterate, as we said at the beginning of the message, we will not be here uh, um, broadcasting live on Tuesday because we will be having the Vacation Bible School. So again, every parent sign up. If you sign up today or tomorrow, tomorrow is the last day, that you get a whole bunch of free materials that we will give to you um, for you to be able to help to do this virtual VBS. So we're calling it. And so the virtual VBS, uh, um, we have all this, the videos online. We have all the game activities and everything else like that. All you have to do is just invite people over, watch it on the screen, and uh, get involved and allow your kids to have great fun time, but also learn so much about Jesus. So you definitely want to get involved with that. Uh, we are also will be meeting in person. Uh, but again, it's only limited seating is available. That will be on this next Sunday at 10 a.m. So please sign up. Um, for that, and that's at hopechicago.church, and you just click on the midway uh, um, part there, and while you're there at hopechicago.church, if you'd like to give, we thank you so much for those who have given and have uh, so faithfully given, especially during this time, and there's different ways to give right now. Uh, one, you can mail it in uh, at 6059 South Archer Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60638, or when you go online to hopechicago.church, you can click on the giving link and go all the way down to where it says Hope Midway Offerings and click on there and you can give there and all those funds will be going to this campus. But again, we thank you so much for those who have given and we appreciate that. Lastly, for those who have any prayer requests, we'd love to pray with you. Um, please connect with us at hopechurchmidway at gmail.com. We want to pray with you. We want to believe with you for what God can do because we want to encourage you and know... Um, that he is still just as miraculous and as power and supernatural as he always has been, saying yesterday, today, and forever. And he wants to do great things, and we want to pray with you over those things. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday at 10 a.m. Again, please sign up for those VBS uh, times.